Welcome to another JP's Chalk Talk Sessions, where we talk about connecting, streaming, and delivering. Hope everybody's well and safe. Welcome to the channel. If you're returning, thank you, and I'm glad to have you back. As you know, I bring in experts, talk to people who are uh, specialists in certain fields. Harry Loughton has his own YouTube channel, talks about Microsoft technologies, as well as some other tools, and want to bring him in today to talk about Microsoft Teams. What is it? How would you use it in a live event? We know in 2020, there were a lot of events that were produced and run using various platforms out there. Uh, and Microsoft Teams was one of those. And Microsoft Teams has some unique features. Uh, they've done some updates. So Harry's going to walk us through. So let's bring him in right now. Hey, Harry, how are you? Hey John, very good. Thanks for bringing me on. I'm looking forward to this uh, this chat around Microsoft Teams and live events and all the cool tech that we've been talking about before this uh, this chat. <laughs> me too. Absolutely. You know, I think that's kind of what it's all about is the is the cool tech uh, and trying to make this help everybody out. And 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 Harry and I have been talking about this and had some conversations about YouTube channel. And I'll put. Uh, link in the description when we're uh, when you watch this video to so you can connect and check Harry's videos out. So Harry, uh, maybe just take a moment and give a little quick background about yourself and your channel. Yeah, John, a pleasure. So I mean, from my side, I mean, I've been in, in IT for, a, for quite a while now, around 13 years, but uh, multiple different roles. But uh, at the moment, I, I spend most of my day as uh, what we call a technology strategist, so helping companies innovate, create roadmaps, strategy, architecture of where the enterprise IT and business is going. But on the side, uh, yeah, I guess the uh, we could say the fun stuff. I, I also run, as you say, a YouTube channel. So mm -hmm. I started that. I think that's probably one of yep. the good things that came out of the pandemic. I've had time to kind of do things I want to do. And one of those was create a YouTube channel. And on that, I for the most part, cover a whole host of different Microsoft technologies, um, you know, from mm -hmm. Teams to some of the management tools. But, you know, it's been a journey. I know, John, you're on a YouTube journey yourself, and it's uh, yeah, it's been fun. Absolutely. I'm, I'm loving every minute of it. Absolutely, yeah, and I've enjoyed your videos. Uh, Harry's got some great walkthroughs of, you know, kind of taking the IT perspective as he's talked about so eloquently uh, about explaining some of these things you know, and, and of course, when people listen to mine, I'm kind of just rambling on sometimes. So, but, you know, it has been fun in midst of the, the challenge of the pandemic, as, as you brought up, Harry, is uh, it has been interesting to take advantage of some opportunities to develop and focus on some areas. I know I've enjoyed it, too, from an advanced technology researching on some of the streaming side. And that's actually how Harry and I kind of connected. We were, uh, he had done a couple of videos, I saw it on live events, I thought, this is fantastic, I should get him to come and talk about it. So that's what we're going to do. I think, as we mentioned, that we're all in a different world around remote work and, and challenge, but you know, why I'm excited for this, and when we, we said the word live events a few times, and really this is part of Microsoft Teams. So anyone out there familiar with Microsoft Teams, kind of Microsoft's collaboration, chat, voice meetings, and mm -hmm. a whole plethora of other technologies mm -hmm. that come into that central workplace hub. Well, live events is just an extension of our, our meetings. So, you know, as John mentioned earlier, things like Zoom, when we think about, you know, normal meetings where we have video, we have audio, you know, people are in chat, you know, much more that many to many engagement that we have. Well, live events is kind of the next section of that. Live events gives us that ability to broadcast on one to many or, you know, really how do we scale to thousands of people on an online broadcast? And I was thinking about this last night, obviously, before we came on and I see all the kind of different things I've seen, either the customers I work with or the companies I talk to, what are they doing, and even inside the one I work for. And John, I tell you, there's been some really fun ones in it. I mean, there's all the normal ones like town halls and you know, Q&A sessions, webinars, trainings, but mm -hmm. there's been some fun ones. I've, I've, I've been on talent shows. You know, People have come up and ran talent shows on this. I've seen cooking classes. There was one time I, I think I learned how to make a stir fry over wow. live events. That's um, cool. And I've seen like vendors, they've um, 
you know, they've done these virtual cocktails. I don't know if you've seen these, John, but I found them pretty funny. You effectively, everyone gets shipped these different, you know, the boxes of what they're going to make. You know, the, the yes. alcohol is, the ingredients. Yep. Yep. They jump on a, a live event. Somebody walks them through it. Yeah, everyone's engaging in the chat. And then at the end of it, hopefully you'll have a, a great tasting cocktail. But I've just seen so many different creative ways of using it. I thought it would be fun just to kind of start with that, that yeah. this platform can scale for so many different reasons and, and use cases. But with that, no, I, I feel like we can dive in. Sure. Yeah, let's do it. I, absolutely. And I think you're right. I mean, there is a lot of versatility to, to the platform. So I, I, I appreciate the context you're giving, Harry, because I think that's important for people to understand and kind of where things are at. Absolutely. All right, let's jump over. All right, great. So right now I'm here inside you know, Microsoft Teams. This is kind of the, the central hub for work. Is we're not going to spend too much time talking about Teams, but you can see we can chat. We got team-based communication and collaboration. But right now I'm in our calendar. Right, it looks pretty blank for me. <laughs> this is a demo account, so I'm not. <laughs> This isn't my general day. I wish it was. I mean, you're not so a busy guy. You. Boy, I'll, I'll see you always tell me you're busy all the time. I, what's up with that? <laughs> I've clearly been lying to you. I have no meetings ever. <laughs> um, but today I want to show us how to make a live event. So I think this is going to be pretty fun. So to do this is pretty simple. And I think you know, there's kind of key ingredients for creating any of these live events. And before you dive in, I'm showing it's at the tech level, but first, of course, you want to plan out what your event is. Why are you having the event? Who's the event for? Who's going to be a producer, presenter? You know, who's actually joining the session? So we'll assume that all of that has been done before. And at that point, you're really ready as what we call an organizer to start creating this live event. So to be able to do it, it's pretty simple. So what we got to do at the top right here, we've got this new meeting. We can just drop down the, the arrow here and we can schedule a live event. And if it's going to feel like any other kind of event-based system, we can give a title. And at this point, John, what we're doing is really setting up that anyone that's going to be a presenter and all of that, we're setting up the information for that. So let's just say we're doing Teams training, for example. Um, I'm not going to put a location. We'll just keep the start date today at 3.30. We're doing it on February 19th. We can then give more information about the event as we want. But I think the really interesting thing and how maybe live events, we might think of different as some other like event-based systems like this, mm -hmm. where what I really like is that either one person can create, publish, produce a live event, or multiple people can be a part of this. And same for kind of the, you know, the production value. You could do it simple, we could just grab a laptop like we are right now and do it, or we could bring a whole full-scale production team in, bring third-party tools in to make this you know, much more fancy look and feel. But on the right-hand side, all we could do here, you know, for example, I could bring in good old Megan, our marketing manager in, and I can choose what Megan's role is going to be. So we have these different roles in live events. So we've got producer and we've got presenter. They're pretty straightforward on you know, the methodology where they are producers. We'd imagine they can choose what's coming up next. They can add in new presenters. They can start. They can end the, the live event itself. And then a presenter, really, they can just present their screen, but also interact in Q&A. And that Q&A is really how the crowd and the audience, the attendees, interact with the people presenting. So let's just say I put her as a presenter and then we, we move forward. And now, again, where live events will have a differentiator against potentially other tools, this is integrated right into Microsoft 365. So you know, at this point, you're already going to have your user identities, everyone in your marketing team, sales, technology, whatever it is. So you can choose to actually give this event permissions out to specific people. You know, if you only want you know, a certain team maybe to watch that cocktail hour, you know, I could go ahead, search for somebody, and just choose them to see this live event. Wow. But then we have a That's couple cool. of other, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know, for Jack, I guess from your side, like when you're looking at some of the other tools, how does this, you know, what is their kind of methodology to bring in different identities or keep it organization-based? or bring it out to external people. Right, right. Oh, I think, and I think you bring up a good point, 
Harry, is that, you know, one of the challenges in 2020, as we talk about some of these tools, uh, one of the benefits for with Microsoft is having the security, right? And so right. especially when we're talking about the identity management, getting a little technical here for some folks that may be watching, but, you know, the, this and, and it, essentially making sure that how we stream this is being done in a way that's secure and especially that is important because of some of the recent incidents that happened last year when people jumped into streaming and they were getting kind of, um, yeah, there is bad actors getting involved. They were just jumping in and really causing some problems. I feel like you can add some GIFs here on the screen of things that have happened over the last years on <laughs> mis yes. mismanaged meetings and demissions and security, but yes, yes, this is definitely something that I think is, is key and, and it's great to see just built in, you know, there's nothing you have to do to make this happen. So mm -hmm. you know, it's definitely nice. And I said, I don't know how every other tool in this kind of world is doing that, but you know, it's nice. There's no, nothing you really have to do. Anyone can go ahead and get through this. Um, similar mm -hmm. with org-wide, you know, at this point we can do an organization wide, anyone with an account that can sign into your organization can go ahead and get into the event. But what I think is, is really cool, and this part here is, is, is public. So here we've kind of taken, all right, so we can have anyone internal in our organization, but how do I have, you know, a, maybe a product launch or, you know, we're doing a training for people outside. Well, that's where we can do this public side. And this kind of goes against our security statement a bit more in the sense of now anyone with the link can, can join it, anyone that's got it can get into this event and, and see it. But, you know, I think this is, this is a really powerful capability to just simply give anyone the ability to join in. And you know, if anyone's watching this and they're thinking, and they've gone through the screens I just had, and this is grayed out, you know, this is, just needs your IT team to enable the ability to allow public uh, events. They may have locked it down for security or whatever reason. So I think the permissions are super just simplistic and, and nice to use on the, on the team side there. And I think the next bits are, are pretty interesting as well, John. This is, you know, I know, let's see, we're going through ECAN now. We're talking about how we're recording this and going through all of that. And this is where we can set up all that recording, how we're going to produce it. And you can see we've got Teams section of this and then an external app, which, you know, if we're using NDI or whatever, we can bring in OBS to do a more intense or a different platform. To, to make a more production value to our live event. But yeah, if you're just somebody that just wants to get this going and do a training for your team or have a, a kickoff, you can just do the Teams version of this. You know, we're on a laptop right now, we can still do it. You can choose whether or not we're you know, recording it, the attendees mm -hmm. can see the recording. But what I really like, which is you know somewhat new, is that on the caption side of it, you know, from accessibility, the language and everything else, is we can also bring captions up to six different languages. And I was looking through this the other day, and there's quite a lot of things and languages here, John, that we can actually add in and, and do. So if you're a global company or you're working with different people across the world, this is set up to be in a pretty good position for you to, to work through that as well. Um, and I don't know, what are you seeing out on, on other things out there, how are you, how are you doing captions and, and everything else? I think the, I think the, the captions has become a hot topic with most people. They were pre pandemic, yeah. right? You know, if you watch a yeah. video on YouTube and, and, and other platforms, uh, we were involved and we were looking at kind of how to create those automation. And then at the time, Microsoft, you know, and other companies out there were developing some of this automation or machine learning as we call it. Right. And Absolutely. elements, right. This, when I heard about this last year at uh, an event that Microsoft actually ran online for their for the general public, uh, I was astonished. I thought this is really cool, right? Because now, you know, when you are doing a live event and we are trying to get out to, let's say, at a global level because everybody's online, yeah. now we can um, start. We can really start implementing some ways to be able to broaden the scope of our impact with the audiences that are watching and participating. Absolutely, yeah, I think it's just super powerful, and you know, yeah, I see it internally when I, I watch things happening. We have it, we have it going on. And, yeah, I think what's really interesting is just how many tools in the Microsoft ecosystem are bringing into caption and translation. 
Yep. You know, even in just PowerPoint, even if we didn't think about Teams or live events or anything else, even in, in, in PowerPoint, you can start adding these captions services so that anyone can read along as you speak. So I think it's really powerful and just exciting just to see it built in there. You know, we don't have to bring in external apps or any other mm-hmm. third parties to make that happen. We can just use Microsoft's engineering and as you say, machine learning and everything else to make that happen. So cool stuff. Yeah, and, and I and in full disclosure, just everybody knows that I am actually I do use Microsoft 365. I do have my licensing set up to use Microsoft Teams and live events and stream. And I had done some testing and I had seen some of this and this is pretty cool stuff that Harry's walking through. So you know the goal in this video is share your your questions or comments you have for us because there are a lot of things in here, even though you see the simplicity of this to the screen, there are a lot of features, integrations. Harry, brought up, Harry, you brought up PowerPoint, right? And you brought up some other tools. So it's not just that you, know, you can do Teams. We can have some integration between the applications to pull into as part of the overall live event. Yeah, and a live event, we're just talking about it in Teams today, but you know, we can scale wider when we start thinking about Microsoft Stream and Yammer, or Yammer's are, if anyone may not have seen it, it's kind of our social media platform for the enterprise. So there's ways of even scaling further out of here. I like to talk about it inside Teams as I feel it's really becoming that, that hub for work. But mm-hmm. yeah, we can just continue to scale and scale it's made to go you know, to thousands and thousands of people. So. Absolutely. Absolutely, John. It's exciting to hear that you're using Microsoft 365 personally there as well. So next up, attendee engagement reports. These, you know, these are all, all the stuff that happens after the event. So we're talking about scheduling now, we're going to produce, and after the engagement, we can see things they've joined and, and so on and so forth. So we'll look at that later on. And then um, we've got Q&A. And this is the main way, as I mentioned earlier, that the attendees communicate with the with the presenters. And this is why that role methodology is so important. And John, this will probably hit home for you is that, yeah, we've mentioned you could do this just as one person. They could do it all, produce, present. And then we've got moderated. We haven't really talked about that. But Q&A, you know, for the most part, we think about best practices of a live event. Ideally, you're going to have a moderator that is watching the questions come in, answering it, publishing the ones that everyone should see and all of that. So you, know, you can just enable that here as well. Okay. Uh, and, yeah, I wouldn't talk about the end bit here too much, but support, yeah, as you would imagine, if you just have a link to your support team, you know, whether it's on your ITSN system or whatever that anyone can go and get support from, you can go ahead with that URL as well. And that's it. That, from a the simple version of this, we're not talking about bringing in all other applications to make it kind of the next uh, production value up. That's yeah. it. We just hit the schedule, John. We've got a live event already set up. And at this point, it's a little, this is where it's a little bit different than a normal Teams meeting. Yes, yeah, this is a normal Teams meeting when I added all the people that were going to join or whatever. That would then send them out an invite. But the way this, this is done, really this invite here is for the presenters and the producers. If I go join this, I'll be joining it from that organizer present, uh, producer view. Mm-hmm. So now that we've got this scheduled, we actually have to go get it out to all of the attendees. And to do that, it's just here, you've got get an attendee link. We can just send that out. You can send it by email, send it by Teams, send out however you want. But that's how you then get that, that set up. And that's kind of the what we we're talking about earlier on the planning phase, right? Like plan your communication. You know, you're gonna send this out by email, teams, mm-hmm. however it might be. And then later on you'll see that this all gets populated after the event is done. You'll get some of these event resources start dropping in. And that's a simple part of getting it set up. And I'm sure you think, John, Harry, show me how to produce stuff on here. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. But <laughs> well, I'll show you. I'll show you nonetheless. So if I go to join sure, here as a let's producer, go for it. let's do it. Let's go have a look at what it looks like. Um, so it's already bringing me up in a different camera there. We can see that. We'll do that. We'll bring it in. Um, let's just join this out. And you can see it's even mentioning, look, you're joining this as a producer to this event. Hopefully this doesn't mess up any of my audio. We'll see. Um, looks like we're good. All right, so at this point, this is 
the producer screen. And it's really nice and simple. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it gives us good feedback at all times where we are in the journey of setting this up. So right now we're in what we call pre-live. So if an attendee joins, they're not going to see anything. It's just going to mention that the event's about to start. And then the way this works is on the left-hand side is where we start queuing up all of our content. So if I want to bring myself in, I could just click my video. And now we can see here my webcams being brought in. And that would be ready then. I could push that over to, to go live. I can obviously share as well and bring in PowerPoints. Yeah, have a look at that quickly. Um, let's just drop down here. Let's just bring in a... Okay, so let's just imagine that we're doing that Teams Live and just gonna bring it back. Obviously in real world, you'd have two screens for this. I'm just bringing up one just because we're doing this. But now we can see at the bottom here that we've got myself being shown and we've also got the content. And I could bring them both in side by side. On the left-hand side, we can do that here. So we've got our video now and I can also bring that content in. So quite intuitive. I mean, it's not a million options here, but mm -hmm. it's very easy for anyone just to get started and start creating quite a nice and professional looking presentation, for example. Yeah. Um, so I could easily just push that to send live. Um, what we might be thinking is when I do send live, that, well, hang on a minute, is that is now we're in a live event? Is everyone seeing this? They're still not. We still have to go ahead and hit start for that to be the case. And we could actually, um, what I'll do for us very, very quickly here is I'll bring us up uh, a browser. My Edge is running other stuff, so we'll do a different browser. Let's, uh, I'm just going to drop this into my other screen. Okay, so I'm just going to cancel this out, and we're going to do watch on the web. And this is great. I feel like Teams is... We can watch this from the web, you can do this from your phone, you can do it from your desktop, you know, whatever platform you're on, you can easily get into a live event or any other kind of Teams meeting as well. So it's just gonna load up in the, in the background there. We'll bring that back later on. Um, and that's it really. So if we want to go live at this point, you know, all I would have to do is just hit start and that live event will, will begin. It's giving us a quick cliff notes here. Hey, look, this is gonna have a little bit of a delay, which is, you know, as expected. So whatever I say will take 10 to 20 seconds. Let's just continue mm -hmm. on that. And at that point, this is all gonna change up. Now we've got live, uh, everything goes red on this side and everyone that would be in the event would, uh, would be seeing um, all of the things that we got on the right hand side here, so my screen, myself, and you know, I could then start queuing up again on the back side here to say, all right, let's make this just me again. And then when I'm ready, I could of course push that back out to send live. So a really nice, simple interface. Um, yeah, it is. And what do you, yeah, what do you think from your side on that, Joe? I think it's, uh, I think it's actually pretty cool. Right, and you know, if you think about it, you know, trying to do a simple presentation, and you're bringing in some panelists, uh, you're maybe going through uh, some of the things we've seen a lot of the virtual events, right? Where a lot of panel discussions, and and Absolutely. going through that, and so I think that's very useful. What's the what's the maximum number of viewers in the current platform? I know Microsoft made some updates last year, uh, so is it like? Originally, it was like 10,000. I think you can have as Mac in terms of the number of people that are watching online. Is that still correct? Yeah, it's a good question. So that 10,000 is definitely, and I'll bring this over. I prepared this with the assumption that we were going to probably talk about this. So right yeah. now, if you were to read our documentation, you can still see this, is, yes, we mentioned look, it's, it's 10,000 attendees. However, you know, due to the circumstances of the world right now you know we've we've temporarily extended that to be 20,000 and okay. you can see even here in the documentation that if you were to go through our support plans you know we could even help you get up to that 100,000 no and oh, wow. it's a little bit different if we did this through uh, stream and, and so on and so forth sure. through teams this is the uh, this is where we're at right now so yeah it's a lot of people that can join and 
you know, I'm, I don't have the product roadmaps, and if I did, I couldn't say it anyway, but I only expect us to continue to grow and, and, and make the service more and more as, as we start developing. So absolutely, it's, it's, a, it's a good amount today. And yeah, it is. Continue. That's a decent yeah. amount. And and I think that's, you know, we'll put some links for everybody to link back to the documentation that's publicly viewable and licensing and all those things and questions you might have about this. But I think that from my perspective, uh, Microsoft's made a big investment on this platform, uh, obviously because of the needs of having these virtual events, and especially from a corporate, you know, whether it's internally just a town hall or a corporate meeting, or you're doing something externally, to connect with your customers, uh, include them as, you know, where you can have Q&A like Harry talks about, right? There's a, lot of, yeah. there's a lot of features to this tool that Microsoft's added on over the past year. And I think that's been one of the good things to be able to say, okay, well, this is another option. You mentioned NDI. Uh, yeah. And NDI, maybe for the audience, you know, that may not be familiar with the NDI, I know some are and some are not, but essentially this is really kind of bringing in a, sor a video source, another signal source in via NDI as a, another service. So that could be another camera, correct? Or another process? Yeah, absolutely. And then from there we could you know, start adding more graphics behind me. I mean, right now, obviously we're just looking at me from a webcam, but you know, we could start easily adding that more production value banners and you know, video streaming in the background or whatever mm -hmm. it might be. You know, I've seen some really interesting ones out there of what people have created and what people have done from that side. So yeah, I think this is, I'm just showing us the pure, you know, this is just a team's native look and feel, but mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, kind of your creativity can, uh, can dictate how far we can go there. There is a document out there as well for best practices for producing Teams live events. And these things are key, oh, right? And go for everything that we talked about again, we'll put the links in. So, yeah, make sure you practice and rehearse how to use live events. You know, it sounds obvious, but it's so important. When you go to your first event, you, know, you want to make sure that you can come into this uh, and it's going to go how you want it to be, or at least you've got the, the best fighting chance for it to be successful, right? And there's some other great kind of interesting things in here, you know, join 30 minutes before, create your short link so it's easy for people to get to it. And it goes through quite a few things, and these are even the things before we jumped on this, this session here that we talk about. You know, is our audio good? Are our headsets good? Is our microphones good? Is our video good? Do we have the right lighting? You know. And these are the things that are just going to continue to improve that production value. And I think this is a really nice document. It doesn't go too deep, but it gives you that good overview of what to expect and how to make a good production value. All right, Jeff. So I think the next thing that's interesting is probably looking at the end user experience. And we didn't touch on the top right here, but this is where all the producer controls are. And we'll come in this in a moment. This is where we can look at the Q&A. We can see all the meeting notes. You know, we can have internal chat. So this is pretty useful. <laughs> Something we just talked about platform we're on is you know, if you have some form of internal chat going on between your producers, you can do that here as well. And you can also add more participants and producers and presenters here as well. But I think what's cool, if we bring over the user experience, I'm just doing this from the web at the moment. Again, you can do this from kind of any platform. But yeah, it's a really simple interface. You know, they could see what's happening live on the screen. That presentation is going on. Um, and then the right-hand side, we've got all that Q&A. So this is how they're going to be able to engage. Um, so, you know, we could ask a question, say, you know, will you share the deck? I think that's probably one of the most, uh, oh, hang on, let me just put that. That's actually meant to be me. So let's just put you know, maybe it's Megan here we're on. So, and then for the question, you know, let's just put it here where you share the deck. You could also do it anonymous as well if I wanted to. So if we just posted that, now what we're going to see, if I just move this out of the way again, for the actual producer or the presenters and their presenter view as well, we could see that that question has been asked. At this point, not everyone can see it. So it's still ready for our moderators to decide what to do with it. So, you know, if it was, Maybe a weird question or something. You might want right. to dismiss it. <laughs> if not, yes. you could go ahead I've and dealt with that before. I'm sure. So, depending on what people you've got on, you could just go ahead and publish that out. Of course, now everyone would see that. You could reply to it as well. Yes. 
and then anyone on the uh, on the event is just going to see that here. So you know they're going to see if I bring that back up to full screen, and we look at featured. Now anyone that's looking at this is seeing that question and what the moderator put. So really nice, simple, easy experience for them to do. Everyone else on the event, they could like it and, and get involved if it was a great question, comment, or whatever it might be. And hopefully after all of that, you've had a successful event and you're ready just to end it. And uh, everyone's hopefully enjoyed it. But once you end it, and the reason I'm showing sure end is because it's key, because once you end the event as a producer, that's it. You can't restart it again. So you've got to be, you've got to be serious. You're committed. Yeah. That's what you're saying. You're committed. So once you end it, that's it. Yeah. Once you stop exactly. the live there's no going back. You can't like, oh yeah, let's go back where we're like, no, no, it's done. Yeah. You just kicked exactly. off your audience. <laughs> Everyone's done now. The scene is yeah. ended. And we could see exactly. how many user in there. So yep. that's, and that's the experience. And I think it's, it's really nice for anyone of any skill level getting into live broadcasting, online broadcasting, to just go ahead and get involved and, and start creating cool and engaging events out there. And you can see afterwards, now we've got all those resources from Q&A &A report, attendee engagement, the recording will start coming up, the transcript. And that's it, John. That's what I wanted to show us from a high level. I think it leaves a scope to, to do some more kind of yeah. exciting sessions down the road. It does. I think so. I think we I think we've got some uh, other sessions here to do to talk about kind of going in a little more specific because I think you know hopefully everybody's going to have some questions here number one, but two, uh, for everybody's watching, there's a lot of value to these platforms and especially with what Microsoft and the investment and Harry's kind of just touching, you know, at a at a high level as we mentioned. But I, I think as, as we go into 2021, these virtual events, we're looking at ways we can really kind of create a really uh, well-produced activity to support whatever the need may be, right? And this could be a corporation, it could be a nonprofit, as I've mentioned, it could be some other type of an event, uh, right? You know, at the end of the day, I think, Harry, to this point, you know, we're all still seeing this kind of the this hybrid model of sorts of where... There's some physical elements in some cases, or where that's able, we're able to do that in a safe way. But another part of it, really, the these online process with the events and all these activities isn't going away. If anything, no. it's just going to expand. And so I, I kind of look at it, I guess, from your perspective, do you see, you know, kind of the things you're working with customers and different folks that just, you know, where... Uh, we're going to kind of go in this year, maybe tuning this a bit, right? You know, last year was kind of hustle it. Now we're going to the into the second year of, you know, into this process of like, okay, well, now we need to think about really kind of taking some being considerate for those that are online, right? And and how do we build a a real valuable experience as well as maintain the quality level of what we're doing? Yeah, no, I think that's absolutely right. I mean, from what I've seen, as you say, once we kind of went into that remote world, and it was quite a rush for any of us. You know, we kind of yeah. It happened and we're like, right, what technology do we have to be able to, one, make our employees productive, right? And that's where we could talk about the rest of the teams for, for a long, long time. But two, yeah, I mean, the engagement and the well-being of our employees was so important, you know, from just even keeping them up to date with the news of what's happening to, mm -hmm. you know, how we we tackling these pandemics uh, was so, so vital. And what I saw was kind of, yeah, the, the quick and dirty version first, right? Let's get mm -hmm. kind of what I've shared today. Let's get it up. Let's get it going. Let's understand the platform. What can it do for us? How does it work? You know, does our, our employees enjoying it, right? Is this something that we want to do moving forward? And mm -hmm. for the most part, I think it was a great success. I think everyone got great value from it. What I then saw was how do we take it up a notch? You know, now that we're getting into this online production, you know, how do we make it engaging? How do we make it fun? And yeah, you know, especially at the company I work for, you see so much effort and energy on creating mm -hmm. fantastic virtual experiences where you know you join it and it could be something as simple as a, a sales kickoff or something like that. And they really put the energy in to make it fun, whether it's the way it's produced with different backgrounds and different assets on the screen. 
But then also to how the actual presenters were bringing their own energy and excitement in from, you know, whether it was dressing up to magic to bringing in guest speakers. And, mm-hmm. you know, I've seen fantastic guest speakers turning up into this live event. And mm-hmm. I was watching one the other day, actually, you know, it, it hit me on that how powerful these kind of systems can be. And when you think like, oh, okay, well, if we can only do a and a how engaging can that be? But right. it was really interesting. Like every time, you know, they kind of had a, a question or a point for the crowd, it would be, you know, put into the, into the Q&A one word of how you're feeling right now or whatever. And, you know, everyone started engaging and, they could bring those questions out and comments. Everyone was liking each other's. And you really felt like you were part of it, even though you, they couldn't see me or hear my voice. Mm-hmm. They, people have really worked out how to create an engaging model on these platforms. And that's what I'm excited for. How do we continue to think of different ways, different creativities and excitement to, to make the most of these platforms? Absolutely. Well, you know, it's been a super pleasure my friend, uh, to have you on today and, and kind of hit this at a high level. Uh, and for those that are watching, uh, one, check out Harry's channel. Uh, and I'll put, again, we'll put a link to it in the description. And we'll put some of the links, too, for yeah. some of the information that Harry's covered uh, that's publicly visible and available on, uh, online. But, you know, we want to hear from you. What would be two or three items that are important to you? Because I think, you know, we can spend a lot of time, and I think Harry's right, absolutely is right, where we look at things through a particular pers- uh, perspective, at the end of the day, we are trying to make that connection online. And from a live streaming perspective, that's important for the audience that we're, that we're servicing, right? Um, and that could be inbound, you know, internal or out, out external. So Harry, thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it. It's been a pleasure to have you. And I I really look forward to bringing you back and where we can kind of maybe go back and, and review again on under some other key points that we weren't able to cover today, but we can kind of make that the next iteration of uh, another session. Absolutely. No, it was a pleasure. Thanks for inviting me on. Um, your channel's great. I've been watching some of the sessions. Definitely super helpful. And Thank you. I would love to come back to, to do another session. Hopefully we can dive in deeper or if we want to talk about another technology, I'm open to that as well. But And everyone that's listening, Feel free to reach out, you know, John share my YouTube channel. Feel free to send me a message or anything else. And I look forward to helping. That'd be great. Well, everybody, thank you. Stay safe, stay well, and we'll talk to you again in the next session.